It's Thursday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Mariah Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. YK in the Joe, building. Joe, Joe. Good How are you morning, doing? Good morning. Ah, I have so much, so much gist, and I know I don't have time to give all that. Just three. Give us, give us. Give us. Ah, okay. First gist. I missed the um, school debate yesterday, debate yesterday. Oh. because of the. We were stuck somewhere. I, yeah. I went to see the governor, yeah. so and he says I should. He watches all of us. Oh yes. So yes. he waves to us every morning. He's a big fan of so, the show. <laughs> please let's wave to him. Good morning, governor. Good morning. And he pad was kicked out yesterday. I was so sad. They won the celebration every single year. The school. Oh, ah, they were kicked out. They so not, not kicked out. What happened was that he, the question they, were, they gave to him, unfortunately, he he, he argued for instead of against, yeah. when his letter said against, oh. and that could disqualify you, and it was like the best. Oh. And he won the, the debate memo. for, I think, three years in a row. No, People were really cried. expecting, he cried, he was oh. so sad. And oh. But we have to stick but to the happened. rules, you yeah. know, because you don't want to... Oh, that's so anybody. sad. That's, I missed it, you know, because I really love the school yeah. debate. I, I missed it, so that made me really So I think a school, upset. Ronick won. Uh, mm. Nice, pretty girl. She did very well, too. Then, second gist. What happened? Ah. Hey, I ate something yesterday. I was throwing up. Eh? Jesus, what did you eat? What did you eat? I don't know what I ate. I don't, I, I, I don't want to go into what I ate. I just know that. <laughs> I ate rice. something. Uh, <laughs> combine things. I will. Hey, I, okay. I was going to you die. You know, talking about that. Yesterday, that I'm here today. He's very good. It's because it's... Ah, I said, hey, this is your last day before you go on celebration break and everything. <laughs> hey, you can't miss it. You better, okay, let me, uh, let me use the opportunity myself. to share what I ate yesterday. It was a horrible. You? I mixed... On sweetened yogurt and just guess. Cool guys. And Gary. Mm. How do you do that? Like, I don't even know what I was thinking. Because I like, I like yogurt and kuli kuli. Well, that sounds I just like thought, nice. Yeah, it sounded and really good. Nice. Yeah, and Gary. I would just be doing chocolate. Mm -hmm. right exactly. Now. Try kuli, try, try crushed kuli kuli. Mm, I, I know that. Uh, I've seen that one. And I'll put some coconut in it. Man, uh, that's me. dessert. Yeah, you know, you have like unsweetened yogurt with crushed kuli 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 and, and, and some chipped um, coconut. Fantastic combination. Yeah, I love foodie. it. Oh, I, I don't it. combine things like that. Uh, I'm very particular. How are you doing? I love your hair. Wait, oh, I think my glasses. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Give us okay, talk about my glasses. So there is a cat that has been coming to our house or has been in the house I'm I'm crying. Crying. Uh, on the tree. Oh. And you know, because of the dogs, they can't come down. Oh. So they saved the cat yesterday. They now brought the cat to you? Yes. They brought the cat. Yes, got stray cat. Stray cat. So you have how many cats yeah. now? Do I have adopted cats in that. house now? Where are the your cats? cats? So, the, so the cats will not be inside the house because the dogs are outside. Uh, it was inside the house. I was making a meow. I said, I beg, I can't sleep with this cat. So <laughs> the way that like saved him from the tree. I, to take him I, I, I like cats, but... <laughs> A stray cat, do I know what he has? Yeah, yes, they yeah. need to take him. We have cats in Shrine. Uh, I, I want cats. to transfer him to Shrine. I, I yeah, can't keep him. The dogs will kill him now. Yeah. There was a stray cat in the house when I got home yesterday. Any other just? Uh, the cat That's came looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> you see how you do. I'm doing great. My hair is weak, Camille. It's beautiful. And I styled it differently today. Nice. So some customers but, say, I bought hair, but it's looking different from the picture. You have to style your hair. So take it to the salon, get somebody good to style it. Mm. That's where you enjoy. This is the one I. This is the type I will. This is the one me. you have, eh, where you wore your straight. Straight. Yeah, straight. Sound yeah. like this. I can actually achieve this. This is lovely. Yes, I'll exactly. wear it again. So I'm doing good. I'm going to be busy very soon. I'm doing a lot of reading, and um, I have trainings to do this mm. period. So just doing it. Mm. Small. And I love your outfit. How's it been? Oh, sugar. Thank you. Uh, where's my outfit? I'm bringing it today. I'll send it to you next week. Ah, ah, yeah. Don't go for your grandkids. You. Don't try it. It's Thursday. I will allow you to talk like that because yeah, you're not supposed to be talking like that on TV. Talking like what? Ah. These are nice. We have issues. Then Nigeria, we have real issues to discuss. Come but you asked us how we're she, doing. She, she, uh, uh, and we she, share. She's, uh, she's owing me something. I, I, I what's his next? We didn't talk about the symposium. We don't, today's the last day. Ah, symposium. symposium. Oh, hey, yeah. our speakers, King Slimogalu, yeah. um, um, Kuka, Kuka, Reverend, Reverend Kuka. Yeah. Um, on Monday, right? Um, yeah, Baba Ahmed. And who else? Kadria Ahmed, Aww. those are our speakers, and then the moderator, oh, Edmund, uh, I forgot to... Yeah, so it's on Monday, what time, Monday? Monday, 11, house, 11. Uh, you guys make sure you come. We'll be there, Neka House, same place. Neka house. Nice. You don't want Nigerians yeah. to come. Same place, Neka House, same Celebra place. Yeah, we'll you have to remember that, uh, Mikey, celebration is like a national event. Yeah. It's, like a, it's something that's becoming a festival. Fly. People fly it is in. A festival. People festival. fly in for mm -hmm. celebration. So yeah. we're proud of it. Do you know how many people I have to meet at the airport exactly. coming from America? Oh, you both will not. Yeah. So I want people, people that want. So we are proud. I, I noticed that, you know, tickets used to be cheap in October. Yes. They're but not now, expensive. Wow. 
market is expensive ah, now. Cool, fantastic. Well done. We're so happy that celebration is growing. Nice I'm, I'm very happy, and I and Lagos State uh, government is supporting. Yes. Ah, they, yeah, uh, Lagos Lagos State, State they did you well this time, right? Uh, well, <laughs> let us leave that one. <laughs> Because <laughs> they retract, <laughs> they will not. Okay, that is all. We can but, uh, the, but but I I love that the governor yes. is supporting and mm. is hundred percent behind us. Oh. It doesn't have to be financial now. Yeah, of course. That's amazing. You know. Okay, that is all we can take on this. When we come back, we go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Okay, we're starting with the nation. APC National Working Committee, Governors PCC members unite for Tinumbu. Wari promises to restore teachers' pride. Our parties can substitute candidates by INEC. Otedala's Geragu becomes first power firm to list shares on Nigerian Stock Exchange. Lagos to riverine communities quit over flooding. 23 remaining Abuja Kaduna train abductees freed. Three scientists win Nobel Prize in chemistry and detractors of PDP will be disappointed, says Ayu. All right, let's start with which story? In um, let me start with the Lagos, the warning from the Lagos government to the riverine communities. Um, I think it's important we take this story because we talked about flooding the other day. Yeah. Um, the Lagos state government have um, warned people to... Uh, that their areas are going to be flooded. There is the high intensity of rain and of rainfall, and so the flooding. And then they are releasing the dams, mm. so they should please vacate their areas. Um, the uh, areas on the Ogun, between the, Lagos, the Ogun state surroundings. You don't want to mention the names of the places. Mm. So they have told us to please uh, that it might be worsened by. The waters from the Oya, Oyan Dam River Basin Development Authority, mm. which has increased the le level, uh, level of water of the lagoon. Okay. So, please, if you're in that area, please don't. Mm. No, no, they added um, K2 K2 Alakbere, Agrik, Owode, Oniri, Ajegule, Alakbule. Yes, so Kara, when I, that's why I said you don't want to oh. be Sherry, Olowo, hey, Olowo, Ra, Araromi. So Otu these are areas Sha. for potential flooding? Yes. yes. So. And October is going to be like the highest point of the rain. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. That's K2, that's my area right here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. My area is there too. Alakbule. <laughs> okay, let's take oh. another story. Yes, yeah, so the federal and state government yesterday marked the 28th edition of World Teachers Day, and it was themed, The Transformation of Education Begins with Teachers. The event is usually observed every 5th of uh, October, and it was set aside in 1994 to appreciate teachers and the good work they are doing by UNESCO. So uh, the president was represented by the vice president, Yemi Usibaju, and he you know, said that um, they are going to be restoring the teaching profession into its right place. Uh, they also said that um, they are going to, there, there's, um, 
full implementation of the professional teaching and teacher qualification framework standards that will impact education outcome and teacher performance at the preschool, basic, secondary and tertiary institutions. And they are working on that. The government also has started developing a verifiable database of teachers in Nigeria through the Teachers Registration Council, um, adding that um, agency has registered 2,108,342 teachers and licensed 1,250 teachers. Um, in overall, the teachers were asking that their minimum wage be looked into. Some states were having conversations on how they can increase their teaching service to 65 years before they resign. You know, what took um, majority of the discussion was more about teachers' welfare, how they can make life better for them. Mm. Okay, so, hush puppy. The United States government has urged the district um, court in central California to sentence the Nigerian Instagram fraudster Ramon Abbas, popularly known as Hush Puppy, to 11 years um, in prison, and that's about 135 months. According to the report, he'll be sentenced by um, Judge Otis Wright um, on November 7th, and that's the date has been fixed for the um, sentences. And uh, if you recall, Hush Puppy is an international fraudster. Instagram fraudster who was arrested in Dubai in, back in June 2020 over an extensive fraudulent scheme that robbed victims of their um, lifelong earnings in the U.S., Qatar, and the United Kingdom, and other places. Moving on now to the punch. INEC governorship list litigation kicks 14 APC PDP LP candidates out. Bandits release remaining 23 um, train hostages. Families rejoice. Mm -hmm. Lagos church dogs stray. Bites passerby to death. Ebola deadlier than COVID-19 heightened surveillance warn virologists. Custom intercept ammunition, others worth of 600 million naira. Adamu governors meet to adjust Tinubu's campaign list. Teachers Day, NUT seeks better deal for better deal and knocks governor, governors. American Danish scientists share 2022 Nobel Chemistry Prize. Okay, which story? Are we to, Michael, did you take the, um, the dog train? The church. Okay. I, the I train. took that, that one, but I'm sure I'll be able to take the train okay. as well. The, the hot I took it anyway. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. With any of them, I'll take him. I take took Ebola. Train. I'll take the... I didn't take the train. I took Ebola. Ah, okay. Ah, I want to read that. I didn't read it. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. So, uh, virologists and um, epidemiologists in the country are calling on the federal government to strengthen public health surveillance across border and post service uh, following the outbreak of the Sudan strain of Ebola virus disease in Uganda. We've taken that story all through uh, last week where um, they had found a particular strain and they are still um, trying as much as possible to ensure it doesn't spread and curtail it within the country. But the fear now is that it may extend um, Uganda to other parts of Africa. Mm -hmm. So uh, the experts are calling for increased awareness and urging uh, that flights from areas where the virus has been reported must be monitored. So a professor of medical virology at the College of Medicine, University of Lagos, Sunday Omilabu, has described this virus as deadlier than COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Now, according to him, the fatality rate of Ebola is about 80% compared to COVID-19, which he said is just about 2%. And he's, you know, advising that we need to have information spread around the country. People need to uh, see the signs, know the symptoms, know what to avoid, what not to do, so that we can curtail this. And, you know, this is going to be in collaboration with the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. And uh, we need to um, also... Um, check countries or um, citizens that are coming in from those red flag countries and mm. just make sure we protect ourselves because we may not be able to handle it. There are no vaccines you know, for Ebola. We need to remember uh. Uh, Dr. Adadevo mm. because she saved Nigeria. Yeah. In, in and then the um, Fashola was governor then. He, he acted very promptly. So I hope he doesn't come okay. to Nigeria again. Anyway, can I talk about the two German shepherds? Yes, so please. Who they're from a Catholic church. It was 11.30 p.m. The guy was walking past their gates. They came out and they attacked him, beat him, and he was rushed to the hospital. They beat him in different parts of his body. He was rushed to the hospital, but he died. Mm -hmm. They now took the dog. Someone has now taken the dogs away so that they can't... For uh, whatever reason. For whatever reason. I don't even know the reason. Who took? Somebody just took... Yeah, yeah. the, dog is that's, that's, the dogs are missing. The dogs are missing. Yeah. So they are complaining that these dogs, you know, they should even be tested for rabies. Yeah. Why are they biting people? Mm. You know? They are stray dogs. They, they should be... Uh, stray I, dogs. I, I think they are stray. 
I mean, it's dog. They, Lagos they, church they, dog. They, 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 they are calling them straight dogs, mm. but they belong to the church. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so they, they need to. Okay, let's go on a quick break. When we come back. We continue. Test them for rabies. Continue our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view. We'll be right back. TVC Communications, we're all about our audience. Millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built, state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blasts, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With the East Bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestrial, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online, and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9 Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment and Hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC communication story. Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing Punch. I was going to take a story. Uh, customs. Customs were giving us a report yesterday. It was uh, by the, um, the acting customs area controller in charge of Federal Operations Unit, Hussein Ajibun, was addressing journalists. I was talking about the fact that they had intercepted ammunition worth $622 million back all in September. In addition to that, they also recovered $107 million worth of um, other um, um, confiscated um, products. Um, they had bills and clothing abandoned on completed buildings. Um, he said they also intercepted a large cache of premium motor spirits concealed inside sacks of in the Badagri. Actually, I think we took that story when it happened. And also in September, they had those seizures of massive uh, bills of 1,955 clothing abandoned in the, in the Lagos Trade Fair area. They also had um, so many, just giving reports, uh, bags of rice concealing all sorts of contrabands. So they bring in these things with the um, rice, frozen poultry, 37 crates of eggs, everything that, is, that you're not supposed to import. They're bringing them. I mean, how do you import eggs? How do you import? I mean, poultry, I thought they had stopped. I thought they were being banned. Uh -huh. Many people are still, they're still smuggling these things. So, because I'm saying that, Obviously, they're just giving a recap of what they've done in September. But it's important to remind Nigerians that we are the ones hurting ourselves. Mm. If you import if you poultry, you're importing rice. The idea is that we want to grow our own economy. So when we keep doing these things and we seem not to understand the fact that we need we're to stop... We're shortchanging ourselves. We're shortchanging ourselves completely. 
Okay, okay let's move on quickly now to the, to the Daily Sun. APC Governor's National Working Committee meeting deadlocked amid Adamu's warning. 2023, INET to deploy undercover security agents at polling units. Court hears ASU's appeal seeking stay of execution today. Until the last very good power, PLC becomes first part company to list the Nigerian Fox, uh, Stock Exchange. Presidency denies arrest, intimidation of OB supporters, vows to arrest lawbreakers. 2023 poll, I won't vote for Muslim Muslim ticket, says or oh, oh, now you come. And um, 2023 budget, Senate opposes 1.7 trillion hour subsidy recommendation. Okay, which story are we starting with? So uh, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, uh, tweeted in his um, tw um, Twitter handle uh, saying that um, an election cannot be adjudged credible if there's intimidation. And he went ahead to uh, describe as extremely disturbing reports of the arrest and intimidation of his supporters. However, the presidency and a, a close source who did not want to uh, be named said that accusations made, made earlier on Wednesday, Peter Obi's social media page, that some of his um, supporters, obedient, known as obedient, have been silently arrested uh, without foundation, that nothing like that is happening. It says that... Um, both the Nigerian police force, the DSS, have officially confirmed that there's no arrest whatsoever. Whether it's a silent arrest, is an open arrest that is made, none has been made concerning supporters. And that the democratic process in Nigeria is free and fair for all candidates, whether they are from established political parties or not. That if anyone carries out a criminal act, that person will be handled as a citizen who is a criminal. If in cause of the campaign you damage properties, government properties individual properties you know you will be treated in that regard not because you belong to any political party or mm -hmm. not okay any other story YK in daily sir no 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 that's the story i read actually mm. you didn't tell me sorry <laughs> okay <laughs> um i was going to take a story um i think is the oh, i was going to take the story on inec mm -hmm. but let's move on i'll take that later vanguard apc will determine when to flag off Campaign says Adamu. Okowa or Shomali clash over poor violence allegation. Anambra, 70 year old, found dead in his flooded bedroom. Insecurity blame Okada riders for rising crime, says Undo and Amatekun boss. Appeal. Appeal court task federal government asked to resolve dispute out of court. Terrorists released 23 remaining Abuja Kaduna um, train attack victims. And uh, Catholic Church yet to decide on APC's same faith ticket. All right, which story? I was going to let me take um, Cardinal Nayeko. He was speaking yesterday um, concerning the, um, the meeting in, the, uh, in Abuja, and he was saying that um, I'm trying to get his quote here. So, the, the bishop of Catholic priest and former president of Khan, John Cardinal Nayeko, declared that the ruling party, that's the APC, um, their same faith. It was their opinion, was a political opinion and best option for them. Um, he addressed reporters at the meeting we had with um, the chairman of ABC, the Ad Ad Adamu, and he says that um, they resolved to forge ahead in harmony. So obviously there was a meeting to find a way to reconcile um, the Khan and um, other Catholic bishops who had their issues, who had expressed their displeasure with the Muslim Muslim ticket. But he's been able to understand that it was a decision that the ABC had to take. In the, furthermore, um, he also said that he wouldn't be voting, that um, he's yet to decide on which party will, he's going to be voting for in the coming elections. Mm. Yeah, I wanted to talk about the, the septuagenarian that died in his um, room. Uh, Mr., his name was Mr. Sunday Messiobi in Anambra State. He, he was... Um, he went to bed. In the morning, they didn't see him, so they were calling his name, calling his name... Ah, so I think they went into the room, they found his cloth mm. floating on the body, and when they lifted it, they found his lifeless um, mm. body there. So it's like he drowned. So they're just using that opportunity to say, look, if your house is flooded, mm. please don't sleep there. Yeah. Go and look for um, a place to stay. That, um, 
that this has gone beyond asking people to converge in a particular location, that people need to do a more community-based approach mm. so that, you know, lives are saved. Yeah, so painful. Um, and he was, yeah. I think he finished um, evacuating his family before mm. he now slept. So let me, painful. Let me take the INEC story. because I was. Um, so INEC has said that they will be having undercover agents and security agents at the polling units across the country. The, um, this was said by um, the spokesperson, Mr. Uh, let me get his name, First Okoye. He's the Voter Education Committee Commission Chair. And he was saying that also they wouldn't allow phones. I'm not sure why that is, but said that um, he announced that the resolution of the electoral empire to ban the usage of mobile phones um, during voting to take pictures or compromise the process. Even with, when they have plain clothes, um, security detectives will be hired to check. So I'm not, I'm not sure how that would, that would work. But um, Okoye also assured that the adult staff have been properly trained on how to configure and position voting cubicles to guarantee the safety and the secrecy of votes uh, people. So, I mean, it's important for us to have a very free and fair election coming. And I'm hoping, and I know that INEC is obviously doing everything they can to ensure well, that well, when, when you um, say that you don't want phones, is it that when you enter the cubicle, you can't carry your phone? I can hear that one. But I'm on the queue waiting. I can't use carry phone. my phone. Yeah, there's a question there places, yeah, there are places you don't, when you go to the embassy, you're not allowed to carry phone now. I say it's uh, disgusting, yeah. Say, that's why I say if you enter the cubicle, uh, yeah, I can understand to that. Phones. No but phones, no wristwatches, no. Mm. Some things just have to fly. So, um, Kogi State uh, yesterday sealed Dangote Cement Factory or Bajana, uh, following an agitation by Kogi indigenous on the questionable circumstances surrounding the acquisition of the company. So, the Kogi State House of Assembly ordered the closure of the company after they investigated the cement factory's operation and allegedly there is no valid acquisition that took place between the company. So um, according to the story they said about um, that uh, the management of Dangote saying that they had uh, seven of their staff shot when this happened. Several others were injured by over 500 armed members of the state security outfit, the vigilantes that stormed the cement factory and, uh, and they came on the order of the governor, that's uh, Yahaya Bello. But um, the um, CDCs are saying that uh, they did not release their youth to do any of that because they cannot even support the government against Dangote. That Dangote has been the one who has been helping the community with the electricity, uh, roads, and every other thing. So they, they, there is no way that their youth were involved in what happened to uh, Dangote, uh, Dangote's factory. And um, the state is saying that um, the House of Assembly had called him to show up and explain with his document how he acquired that particular factory and he's been giving one excuse or the other till they had to lock up the whole place. Okay, let's move on quickly now to the Nigerian Tribune. Let's find a story of not taking campaign council heard APCs, APC governors, PDP National Working Committee to appeal court judgment on Ugun chapter. Oyetola appeals court ruling nullifying his candidacy for Oshun election. 15 arrested governments imposes dusk to dawn curfew over anti EFC protests in Ugeli. I can't believe how that thing has explained. Uh, World Teachers Day, FG governors announced special reward for teachers, and the appeal court panel asked the federal government and asked to settle this with out of court. Which story? What's going on in Ugeli? Yeah, that's, that's the story with Ugeli yesterday. Now, those Ugeli, yes, nah, yeah, Ugeli. Ugeli. those um, Yahoo um, boys, <laughs> Ugeli, <laughs> <laughs> those Yahoo um, boys who were arrested, I think about, um, I can't remember the number, is it 95 or 75 of them? Mm. And the, we had their girlfriends and some of their friends come out to you know, protest. They had placards on that they should release their Perfect. boys. Hey, we took the story yesterday. However, the police has waded in and they said they had arrested 15 uh, people in connection to the protest because the protest now snowballed into something else. So probably after we saw those videos, they now went in and started damaging and destroying. You know how protests, mm. protests in and the country is, yes. and here, how it degenerates into something else. So the police has also uh, ensured that there's curfew in the town Nobody should be seen at a particular... They didn't mention the time here, particular time, to see how they can, you know, just um, settle the whole thing in Ugeli. Ugeli is in Delta State. Okay, last... Yesterday was World Teachers' Day, and obviously, um, federal government and others announced um, various rewards for teachers. And I think in Lagos State also uh, awarded teachers. Yeah. Did you send any gifts for your teachers 
yes, I can send later. I didn't remember. <laughs> ah, I had a very busy day. Yeah, yeah I send gifts. I was counting back with the products gifts. in the house. Uh, then they just, <laughs> uh, there's, a, nah, there's always time to We, we had school debates. So, oh, yeah, oh. that's good. So, um, but I mean, we didn't take it in punch, but I think we should just at least mention it that yeah. the bandits, they released the remaining. There's a hot topic. Oh, it's a hot topic. Let's just, let's just, let's just, we'll talk about the bill. Let's go on a break now. When we come back, we move on to our hot topic. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. What's your... At TVC Communications, we're all about our audience, millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built, state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music, and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali, and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With news bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestria, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online, and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria, on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9. Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment, and hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC communication story. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues and last but not the least a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate and yes you guessed it women so if you catch the drift then you're on to something we will provide Thanks for staying with us. Join us on the show is the founder, I Create Club, Inyola Afulayum. She's an unconventional children's club, which is each as of this year's runs across about 100 primary schools. Welcome with us, 
Mr. Folayan, welcome to the show. Thank you very Good much. Have you? Thank you very much. Tell us what this I Create Club is about. Okay, um, so I'll start from the beginning. Yeah. So the club was founded in the year 2015 as a response to what I'll describe as an a steep learning culture across several education systems within Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So we started out with 20 primary schools, and over the years we have grown, we have expanded, and we are currently within 100 primary schools, both private and public. Uh, talking about what inspired the club, I'll have to actually say it was divinely orchestrated because growing up I never really saw myself doing what I'm currently doing. Even as a young graduate, I never really thought that I would walk down this path. But let's just say that one thing led to another and, you know, as I said, the rest is history. But now this is a very long history, so I cannot go into all the details, but I'll summarize what's relevant to our conversation today. So several years back, I was a double degree holder. BSc Electrical Engineering from the University of Lagos, MSc Management Information Systems from the University of Manchester. But now, despite all this, I struggled to get a job. I couldn't land my dream job. So I settled in for a career in advertising. Now, okay, advertising was not my first choice, but looking back now, I will not change anything about that time because there I gathered a lot of experiences that I used to run my business today. And aside from that, I also got reconnected with a long forgotten passion I had for creativity, creative writing specifically. So for me, those were positives. Now there were also negatives in the sense that the company where I was working was in the process of going under. I never knew that until I was within the system. So obviously frustration set in. But let me give credit again to God. Thank God the frustration did not get the better of me. I think eventually I was able to see it as an opportunity to, you know, to begin to see how I could progress from being a disgruntled employee to becoming a business owner. And I believe it was at that point that the idea of the Accred Club was conceived and somehow we moved on to the process of birthing the club. Now, we are not your conventional club. Regular clubs are talking about specific skill sets. So when we talk about like homemakers club, we know that kids are there to learn how to, you know, things along cookery, needlework and the likes. But for us, our scope is a lot broader. We focus on the mindsets of the children and really our vision is to nurture the creativity of the children. Because I believe that every child, irrespective of who the child is, where the child was born, whatever part of the world you happen to come from, there's a measure of creativity in the children. And it's up to us to nurture that creativity. And why is that important? Uh, we live in a doggy dog world right now. Very few opportunities, very stiff competition. So who is going to get those few competitions? And what's going to stand out anybody at all is the person's ability to exhibit creativity. You know, I've acquired knowledge. How can I creatively express that knowledge? That's what's going to stand out from your peers. And, you know, one of the days when, you know, in the past, children go to school and, you know, parents tell them that, you know what, you just come out with a first-class degree, you're sure of getting a good job in a multinational, or, okay, I'm going to get you to go to UK, US, and when you come back, you're sure of getting a degree. But from my own story, you see that even all those fancy certificates, they are no longer the gold they used to be. It's a lot more common now, and now everyone has to really fight for the few available spots. We also should not forget that, we have a lot of children who never, who are not exposed to the level of education that many kids are, but yet because of the internet, global, global village, they get access to information. So the child that is in school is not necessarily better than the child that is not in school. It's just the child's ability and willingness to learn. So competition, competition is really stiff. So let me ask you because of time. Okay. Um, you are really passionate about this. I can see how you are going on. And yes. if we leave you, you just give us 30 minutes, glass boost. <laughs> so um, what exactly are the activities yes. that happens in this okay. club? Okay, so now, so we're now getting there. So now, okay, so I was going to get there. So it's all about not showing the creativity. So now what we are saying is that if you're able to be creative with the seemingly simple things around you, when you get stuck with the big things, when you get faced with the big things, you'll be able to, you'll be able to step in. So now we expose them to all kinds of activities. And now what we tell the kids is that, see, it doesn't matter whether you want to be a doctor or an engineer or a fine artist. Once you grab these activities, you'll be able to function in whatever field you have. So, for example, I have these things here. They are called squashy balls. We've given them a task where they had to take these balls. And, you know, when we think of balls, we are thinking that, oh, you throw the ball, you roll the ball. But we said turn it into something else. And we were amazed at what the kids came up with with this. And we have something else we call the pillow art competition. Basically what they have is this, a plain white pillow. And they are supposed to turn it into art. Now we give them a theme. So last year's theme was ocean. And we said come up with something, interpret ocean. So you know for many of us we think ocean in terms of you know, water, um, sharks, 
a boat, beach, and things like that. But we actually have a prize for concept, apart from the person who is artistically skilled. So the person who won actually came up with um, the interpretation of stop pollution. So his art was really about the environment, don't pollute the ocean. And that was the direction in which the child thought. Then there's another one we have, we call it the business plan. Now, I know there are a lot of people that say they are children entrepreneurs, but let's face it, it's not because, oh, I like cooking, I go to start a, 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 a food business. It, you have to be solving a problem. Yeah. So what we tell the kids now, okay, look within your immediate environment, what problem can you identify and come up with a solution? So the girl who won last year, she said that her first visit to the salon was actually an anticlimax. She went there with her mom and her sister, everything was adult-sized. And she was expecting something a bit more. And she came up with an idea that, why don't I not start a children's salon? And now, okay, we said that, okay, there are people already doing that. But she said, there's nothing like that within my area. And she now began to come up with ways in which she was going to differentiate her from what already existed. So basically, what we are doing is getting these kids to think outside the box. Because okay. it's actually very, very... Solve problems within their locality. Yeah, solve okay. problems, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. um, what's the vision? What's your the end vision for the club? So, okay, where we, are, where we are going to with this is the fact that um, right now we live in an era where, <clears throat> as people say, there's a mass exodus in Nigeria. Everybody is living, but I'm a strong believer in us staying here to fix the problem. And I believe that we are doing it by that. playing a little bit here. Mm. We are preparing these kids. Let's face it, I have no power over the past. What has it been has been. What's happening right now, I have very limited control, but really the future is still unwritten. And it's in the hands of these children. And if we can keep on investing in them through this means, to be honest, there's no telling just how far they can go. So currently, as I said, we started with 20 schools. We are now in 100. And, you know, our vision is to actually get into every school in Nigeria and keep on touching and okay. changing the lives of these children. One of my major concerns, and because I, I do some work for <clears throat> education, mm -hmm. the kids get so, they, they, everybody has an idea. Mm. Mm. Every single Nigerian who is in education has a bit of something idea. So we are saying the same thing in different ways. So this comes our own idea, why it comes around, and they are bringing it to different schools. I want to get to schools, get to school. And I think, and the kids are getting so bombarded. Mm. There's so many solutions. Mm. This one, this club, this one. How do we sift through all that and say, okay, I create is what we need, to, what we really need, because I know that so many schools have different initiatives yeah. they are doing some creativity uh, out of the box they are, they are out, and the kids are getting I, I get really frustrated when they are constantly telling me really? there's so many options for kids like mm. every, so can we, can we yeah can we for someone find a way to bring everything together and say okay this is all I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find a way to write the question but how do we pick i create what what makes i create different, different from all the other okay so like you know other clubs are running week in week out we only see the kids once a term and now, we are not competing with the other club. Because I mentioned, other clubs, whether we like it or not, it's either they are trying to teach the children how to dance, how to cook, how to do a specific thing. But we are just telling the children that, see, fine, whatever your vision is, whatever you want to be, it's fine. But we are working on their minds. We are saying, get creative. So there are all kinds of... We deal with everything, but we are saying that just be creative, no matter what your field is. So we are not there competing with what already exists. And that's why schools are able to absorb us, because they already have their own club, but they still take us on. Because what we are doing are working, is working with the mindsets of the children. Okay. So how is, um, you know, Vital Form has been the major sponsor for this. Mm. How is that collaboration okay. going? So now, um, it's amazing what, you know, using the word sponsorship with Vital Form seems, seems somewhat like an understatement. Because when I create club was simply still an idea on paper. Vital form caught on to the vision, and um, they've been supporting us. Okay, at the end of the school year, we have this fancy inter-school competition where everybody comes together, mm. the parents, the schools, they are, there's the media and all of that. It will be very easy for Vital form to say, you know what, I create. When it's time for your competition, we will step in. But Vital form is not just interested in the end result. They are part of the process. Mm. So we move from school to school. We tour the schools. So from day one... So the very last day of the school year, Vitaform is there supporting us. And for me, it's commendable because this is an era where entertainment actually is taking a bulk of the investment. And for Vitaform to actually understand the importance of education, and as I said, the, um, their investment is not skeletal. It's actually in-depth. From day one to the very last day, they are supporting us. So that's where they come in. And, you know, it's amazing that they catch on to the vision of this. 
Thank you very much. So it was good to have Thank you. Thank you. I Chris. Any other information you have? You have about a minute left? No, I guess maybe where we just, how we just land it is that, um, as you mentioned, we can't do this without support. Mm. And um, support, you know, it's not only in finances. For example, we have Kids Literary Circle. Last year, they actually toured all the different schools with us without collecting anything. And what they were doing was just giving back. So what I'm saying is that Vitaform has shown to, has proven to be a space setter. And I think other people, even individuals, can actually look for how do you partner with things. Because like I mentioned, I'm very passionate about Nigeria. I'm passionate about things happening. And the only way we can actually do this is through the children. So I'm just hoping that just as you know, the stage has been set, let's keep at it so that we actually you know, have a future that we can actually look forward all to. Right. Thank you very much, Thank Mana. You. It was a pleasure having you on yes. the show. Thank you very much. Thank That's you. all we can take on this segment. When we come back, move on to other topics. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. At TVC Communications, we're all about our audience. Millions of viewers, listeners and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, Curtsy e Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With the news bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV station of the year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestria, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online, and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria, on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9 Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment and Hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC communication story. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas. It shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move way in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting, as the arts are meant to be. Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics 
the leaders of your view and I will be staring up our guests to get in depth into all the various topics and you our viewers will have the opportunity to call in and share your views after all it's your view join us on your view 9 a.m to 11 a.m for a fantastic conversation don't miss it Thanks for staying with us. Almost six months after the Abuja Kaduna train passengers were kidnapped by Boko Haram terrorists, the 23 remaining kidnapped victims have finally regained their freedom. So, joining us on the show a bit later is the chief executive of the Nigerian Railway Corporation, NRC, uh, Mr. Fidet Okira. He'll be joining us in a moment, but um, let me start with the ladies. What are your thoughts on this release? I mean, it's been six months. I know YK has been quite interested. Yeah. This story. I'm told he's there already. I'd like to let him join the conversation. Good morning, sir. Are you there? Mr. Okira, are you there? Can you hear me? Hello. Hello, sir. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Can you hear me? Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Very faint. Very faint. Okay. While we're trying to get that resolved, um, when you heard the story about the release. Hello. Can you hear me, sir? Okay, but I can hear you. Okay. But not that well. So congratulations uh, to Nigeria, to you and to Nigerians, of oh, course. For oh, the... uh, congratulations to Nigeria. Yes. I will thank God for... Now, the, the, first, the first questions um, that come to mind is uh, what happened, as in... How did this release come about? Were they just voluntarily released, or was ransom involved, or what exactly happened? What was given for what? So that's what Nigerians are asking this morning. Hello. Yes, sir. I can hear you. Hello. Did you hear my question, sir? Why? Why? I think I have to reconnect him. Okay, so while we're trying to get to connection, what are your thoughts on this? Like, I know you were very interested in this story and you kept on, on it and reminding us that we, mm. we didn't want to forget the victims. What are your thoughts when you got the news? Well, my first thought was happiness for the victims because I, I, um, it's not <coughs> to be yeah. in, in captivity like that. It's, and, yeah, and you can't see your family, nothing. I mean, let's just... I mean, most of us are addicted to our phones or our iPads. You will not have phone. You will not have anything. No food. They lose weight. Ah, so I, I'm I, sick. If I, my, and then the next thought is, I'm so happy no one died. Mm. You yeah. know? I'm oh. really, really happy that no one died. And I, I would just like to know how it came about. Did yeah. they pay ransom? Is it because that guy was arrested? Is that guy involved? The, yeah, the, the, um, the informator. Was yes, it, what, the, what was he? The, mm. Not the informator. The negotiator. The, the negotiator, the negotiator. Yeah. yeah. Don't then, um, how are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts I was on this? happy. I was excited. You know, for the sake of asking questions, I would ask questions how this happened. But for um, a few minutes, I was really glad that we didn't lose these 23 people. You know, we've had cases where people have been abducted. And it, it, it went on for years. We had Chibok girls, you know, still some still in captivity, Dapchi girls, you know, and all that. But the fact that we're able to finally solve this issue. Later on, we can now start talking about what did we do right, what did we do wrong, how do we prevent it. But now, for now, I think we should just um, take in the happiness. We should yeah. just um, yeah. uh, share that joy with right. the family members who have finally reunited with their family, okay. I'll call so it. I'm told he's back now. Good morning. Are you, can you hear me properly now, sir? Hello, sir. Can you hear me properly now? Yes. So we had asked before that Nigerians are really happy. Congratulations to Nigerians about this release. But the first question that comes to mind is, um, how did it come about? Was it was there ransom paid? Did they have to do an exchange, or would they, were they voluntarily released?
Hello. Huh. Ah. Yes. Hello. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? I, I can hear that word. Can I? Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> Let me try to ask the question <laughs> one more time. Can you still hear me? Yes. I said. Well, we were just we're, we're happy about what happened. We just want to know if ransom was paid or if there was some kind of exchange or if they were voluntarily released. Hmm. Right. Okay, I guess we're going to break. When we come back, we'll continue with our show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. At TVC Communications, we're all about our audience. Millions of viewers, listeners and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, Curtsy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With the news bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV station of the year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestria, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online, and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria, on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9 Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment and hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC communication story. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas. It shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw ether material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be. Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get in-depth into all the various topics and you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's your view. Join us on Your View, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Don't miss it. We 
We still have our guest from Nigeria Railway Corporation, Mr. Fidet Ukira. Sir, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Thank please you. go ahead with the uh, answering the question I asked earlier. Go ahead, please. Well, I think the relief was achieved by defense and military intelligence, and we give them uh, uh, the the. the They have tried their best and they are released. And for the last two or three, but they have would have negotiated and the people released. I think that's where I stopped that. We, we, we want to celebrate the time that the people are out. I don't think we lost the day any test from the record so far for those that were ahead. I can work what the president told you, the release of those heads. Okay, that's amazing, sir. Now, do you have an idea if there's any plans for rehabilitation and compensation to these victims now? Because most of them must have gone through a trauma. They'll be needing things like therapy, not just to be released to their family members to pick up from where they stopped. Do you have any plans for that sort of compensation and rehabilitation? Uh, there is a unit for that. This is not the first time they are getting people released. The chief of guys are getting released and they place the kids up. And they will debrief them. So, that's I said, it's a real location. <laughs> and I can, I can, I can put my guess on real operation. But this other thing, we will leave, them, leave it to the airport. We have to have it between the Nigerian government and... Right. Have the victims been, um, okay. have they met with their families? Yes. Have they been reunited with their families? They are cut up my staff there when we are talking to the wife, I said, that they have talked to the husband and been to the husband. Then they have met with them. So that are very perfect. Okay, are there plans to resume the railway? Um, that, is, that, is, that is the next stage. I got speak to you in Abuja already. Okay. I flew to Abuja last night to start preparation and to work out the uh, protocol of the operation. Well, so, going, well, I'm going forward. We are missing, and we are missing. So, we have some. Uh, how so we can resume uh, service, not just resuming the service, to ensure that the user. That our staff are properly protected and the track we take. We have been patrolling the track with the ray bus. We need to do some uh, trial run with our passengers before we can commence anything. But we are missing the staff to know. So we will go to the ministry, the ministry and those, the committee, you know, that the committee set up on the, uh, on the security and uh, yeah. the forest we recall the Minister of Transportation was saying when this happened that he had requested CCTV surveillance cameras across various routes and it was for whatever reason, because of bureaucracy, it was, it was, it wasn't, um, um, they weren't able to get those on time. So what has changed? Have we, do we have now better surveillance cameras um, that, has been, that has been purchased for, for, for this? I don't think my Minister of Metro Samia, even the top of the solution or his system, that can monitor real time. I don't think there's a right big camera. So because uh, the team, the security team that is working, is coming up with a solution on what to be deployed that we don't be fall and the and it becomes a get of a of what you put in place. I get so that, Mr. Okira. Mr. Okira, I get that. The point is that, you know, it's been six months and yeah. we've been talking about this forever. So we're hoping that by launch, there's already, everything's already in place. in place. Not that they're going to be discussing, they're going to agree. And then we're they expecting that by now, we are clear on what has been, what's going to be provided now that we're about to start and resume operations. It's it, it, it just enough between me and you. We have to take care of a lot of uh, 
this uh, that things that are happening in the world. Uh, it's not just what you just wake up and do. There is a train operation in the system. We cannot isolate ourselves from the uh, uh, plant. It's what you know is possible. And we don't jump into a bad one now. We don't walk. So that's why they are taking up our time to ensure it's what we work with this system. And the other thing that we have looked back into proceedings as a Japanese people, all the way from Hindu to Kaduna, and God forbid, and on their way out of Kaduna, or on their way to Hindu or to Kuba, or to any of the other stations. This thing did not happen at the, at the station, it happened between stations. We have to study it properly and not uh, do something that will not work well. So that is the proposition. Yes, is there a promise? To, 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 to do it well than do it as far as it is. Yes. Yeah, we like that. Yeah, but is there a promise? But is there a promise that it will be done well before operation starts? It, 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 would, it will be done, but it's not going to be in the press. It's not advertising the things that you are putting in. Right. Or it, it will be uh, advertised. It will be done. Okay. It will be done before operation starts. That's all we want to know. Uh, right. We do what is possible to be done to make operation uh, be safe. And, uh, in, in the six protest, months, protest again. in the six months, what have you been doing? In the, in the six months, we have been trying to work out the people head uh, really. We have put the track in place. We are putting those coaches and tracks that have been uh, affected. We are meeting with different people okay. that are providing different solutions. Immediately, this, this thing happened. For every person, every Nigerian became a real expert protester to provide security. We have a lot of a lot of proposals, so we have to fit it. And it was important to that expert in security. An intelligence by approaching. That's why you have a, a, a committee that was inaugurated to work on proper security, not just the rail or the rail user, but right. something that will extend outside the rail that will protect. Finally, sir, buyers. because of time, let me just ask this question concerning insurance. So, would you compel passengers to at least pay for insurance before the board, or is that going to be some kind of way to compensate? Or, because there's got to be something to help people when the, in case of this kind of eventualities happen. Yeah, yeah. They, they see what most people don't understand. We have a figure insurance. Okay. But as a system happens, it's not that you know that there are tested. The premium will not cover mandatory or uh, kidnapping. Uh, 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 or that you uh, have mandatory and kidnapping. Uh, uh, yeah, the insurance did not cover it because you have to pay a higher premium. Right. And in that case, the premium will be higher than the ticket. So what we are considering now is to so leave it as an optional uh, as you have on the airline. <laughs> you, you pick the insurance you want to pick. Right. Uh, yeah. So we want to, uh, we have designed something like that so that we have the basic insurance in case of accident, in case of uh, something happens on this, but not uh, uh, terrorism, Thank you so much, sir. I just wanted to get an update from you so that we are clear on what's going on with that. But I'm so happy for Nigerians and uh, to the families of those who have been abducted and six months waiting and finally going to see their wealth, loved ones. It can we be thank, God and thank you for your support. We will start to keep the hope alive. That's what we make that for. Thank you, and God bless you. All right, sir. It's going to break. When we come back, move on to our hot topic of the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, 
And last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So if you catch the drift, then you're onto something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So if you catch the drift, then you're onto something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Hmm. Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get in-depth into all the various topics and you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's Your View. Join us on Your View, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. TVC Communications, we're all about our audience, millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built, state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With news bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestria, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria, on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9 Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment, and 
Hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC communication story. Thanks for staying with us. So, about a month or so ago, we took a story concerning a very popular Lagos doctor who was accused of allegedly um, molesting an underage girl. And this story was broken by um, Damilola, princess comedian, and um, was, it went viral, and we discussed, discussed it on the show. Today, we have the opportunity to speak to his wife, who um, started these allegations, and she... Um, was willing to speak to us on this story, to hear our own side of the story, because um, the case is yet to go to court, and uh, we're still trying to ensure that justice is served. So um, to join this conversation, we have Remy Olaleye with us. Good morning, madam. Are you there? Good morning. Good morning. Thank Good morning. you so morning, much everybody. for joining us. Morning. Right. So um, the story as we know it is that your husband, you started up the story where your husband is being accused of molesting a young girl, according to you, that lives in your house is your niece. And um, since that time, we've had issues of the case going to court because according to the reports, the police say they are still waiting for the legal department of the police to uh, come up with their findings and then take the case to court. But let us hear the story from the beginning, from you, and let us um, know exactly what transpired that led to the point where you had to come out to share the story to the public. Um, thank you, Morayo, and uh, good morning again to the ladies of The View. Morning. Um, morning. Thank you for, for reaching out. It's, um, this has been the most uh, difficult decisions and situation I've ever had to, to find myself in. Um, I've been married to to doctor for 12 years, and um, if the people that know us, know that, I mean, in quotes, we, we, we do have a good relationship. So when I hear allegations of, of set up, it, 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 it beats me. How would I set up uh, the father of my children that I gave 12 years of my life? Um, this child in question is my niece. She's the daughter of my cousin, who at as at December 2019, was living with my late mother, with a, a, a grandmother to her. So when my mother passed away in 2019, we got to read her will. And my mother in her will had this child as number one priority on her will, that this is a decision she has decided that we should follow through with this child's education and ensure that everything she has put on that will concerning that child should be met. Okay. So we, we had the family meeting, and we decided that, okay, she was coming to stay with me. And prior to that, this, this is a very good child. This child practically, you know, my mother practically died in the hands of this child and, and I. So this is a child I personally have a, a, a soft spot for. Okay. So the father living with us immediately at my mother's funeral in, in 2020. And she lived, she started living with us February 2020. Unknown to me, when 
during the, the lockdown, which was March 2020, Fanny started abusing this child. He initially introduced that to pornography. It's what she said to us. From pornography to oral sex. From oral sex to the main thing. And the one that kills me most is that this thing went on under our roof, our matrimonial home for 18 solid months without me knowing. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a useless mother. This child sleeps in the same room with my children. I have a daughter and I have a son. They sleep in the same room. And this is what this man does. He goes to the child room with my friend and I sleep on the same bed in the same room. I notice sometimes that he wakes up in the middle of the night. I say, oh, well, you are not sleeping. So he can't sleep. He can't sleep, he wants to go and watch documentary and study. I said, okay. I mean, I cannot be training a grown man. I wouldn't have thought that for a child that calls you daddy, you would do such a thing to her. You wake this child up in the middle of the night, take her to, I have 16 cameras in the home. I'm a, I'm a mother. I have domestic staff, so I put those cameras there for to check on what is going on in the home. There are two places in the home where I didn't put camera, which Femi is not insisted. The study and the, the ante room downstairs. He said to me, oh, is this house the damn barracks? Why are you putting cameras all over the place? I said, I have children. So I, I need to know. He said, no, I shouldn't put cameras in his study and the ante room. My dear sister, this is where this man takes this child to. To defile her. Let me save you. Let me, let me ask story. a question. Was it that yes. the girl confessed to you, or you found out you read the camera, or something happened? How did you know this no. was happening? Okay, I didn't. Th this is the thing. I didn't even find out by the camera. And I, I, I said to myself, what, have I, what kind of sleep have I been sleeping for 18 months? And here is the thing I'm almost 50, I'll be 50 soon. This man gives me. If he claims he gives me some aspirin to avert a um, sudden heart attack or what have you. It now occurs to me that this one probably must have been giving me something else. Because everyone that knows me knows I'm a dolphin mother. This is how I found out. Uh, sometime in November last year, Femi was out of town. He went to a better hospital. And um, I had I'd been noticing some behavioral changes in this child. And I thought, oh, uh, my dear, are you, you know you can talk to me. Are you having boyfriends? Are you he said, no, mommy, you know. So this particular day, I was sick. I had some appendicitis bowel. And I had, um, I had some assistance in the house. And I already told this my child that whenever we have male assistants in the house, I don't want you disappearing. So I went, I sent some, someone to call her. And as she was coming up, she was coming up with a frown. And I said, oh, what, is anybody bothering you downstairs? She said, out of reflex, she just eased. I said, what happened? Who are you? This is a normally respectful child. Yeah. Why are you eating? She said, she said, I don't know. I said, come, why are you eating? I said, come, come near me. What is the problem? She just eased again. So I smashed her. I was not feeling fine. I had an appendicitis operation I just did. I took every strength in me. I beat her. I said, I've told you. There's something biting you. What is wrong with you? You know, she, 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 I beat her. She cried. She said, Mommy, I will tell you later. So she didn't tell me that thing. So the following day, Femi came back from his trip. And the, the, the little ones, my little children, went to meet him. I said, Oh, Daddy. Um, you have to talk to X. She she was rude to mommy yesterday, but mommy beat her. I think she's beginning to, to be rude these days. What is this man supposed to tell me? Oh, my dear, what happened to you and your daughter while I was not around? No. He went straight upstairs to the, to the room. You know, in his mind, you, 
He thought probably I did the child because I had known. And I hadn't known anything then. So he went straight up there. He, he did a CC, screenshot a CCTV footage where I was beating this child and forwarded the lawyer. The lawyer being the family friend forwarded the CCTV footage to me that was going on. I said, I don't know. I beat my, my child, my niece. I don't know why he's sending CCTV footage to you. So he came downstairs, went straight to this child's room, this child's room and said, oh, fella, my dear, my wife is an animal. My wife is an animal. My wife is a bitch like this. You know, try to... I mean, later was when we realized that he, was, he thought I had known. So he was trying to play the, the game with the child, playing on the child's psyche. Oh, my wife is an animal. I thought, why would she beat you like this? If she were in England, they would have arrested and blah, blah. The child was trying to explain that I was rude to mommy. He said, no. So he now called my little children to come and apologize to my niece on my behalf. So that was when I, the, the little children were like, Daddy, no. This, the, my, our sister was rude to mommy. Right. That's why she spanned her, you right. know. So, so because, of of time. because of time, because of time, yeah. Because of time, Remy, let us know. So how did you now find out? Because of time. Okay. So that, that I'm, I'm getting there. So I went to him. I said, this is not normal. Why are you, why are you doing this? Why are you um, scolding, trying to, you know, rub it in front of this child? So... He said, I should get out. And he, I said to you, well, I don't know what is biting I said to him, I don't know what is biting you, but whatever is biting you, God will expose you. The next minute he said to me, what can you say? The word you can say is that I'm, I'm sleeping with her. Yes, I'm sleeping with her. What can you do about it? Whoa. He said that to me face to face. Within a split second, I said, well, don't shout to This is a message. Don't let it say, other people hear what you are saying, because this is clearly not normal. Before I could say Jack Robinson, he told my niece to pack her things that he is taking her out of the house. So he took my niece out of the house himself. Of course, he took her out of the house so that he can probably threaten her the more to say, don't, don't say anything. So, unfortunately for him, maybe he was wondering where he's taking the child to. He took the child to my mom's sister. So, when, my, when they got to my mom's sister, my mom's sister was like, this is not normal. So, by the time he left, she talked to the child and the child eventually told her all that has been going on for the past 18 months. All right, let me get wow. a few more questions for you. Okay, Ma. Yes. So, um, yes. I, I find you uh, very strange. Strange in a good way because we've been advocating here that when things like this happen, women should begin to speak up. Why did you decide yes. to speak up against your husband, which is not the norm? Why my are you... Sister, I'm a mother. It breaks my heart. You, you need to hear the gory details of what has been done to this child. Oh, my God. It breaks my heart. I have a girl as well. If Sammy can do that to my niece, who calls him daddy? He can do it to his child. Hmm. I owe that child the truth, regardless. Oh. I owe her justice, regardless. Because I have a young child as well. Hmm. It, it is the most difficult thing for me to do. I wake up every day with anxiety and palpitations. But I just have to do it. All right. Let me get a few you questions in for you. To hear the gory details. Oh, my God. In the 12 years you've been married, have you ever had any reason to believe that he is unfaithful or he's had um, side chicks or... Amelia. Or... My sister, some of the... Some his, his ex, don't, don't forget that he's been married before. His ex-wife reached out to me and... Some of the things I'm, I'm hearing now, they beat me. Um, like, I mean, a typical Nigerian man, he has his day with some girls, you know. <laughs> but I, 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 I remember I tell him that, you know, God does not give you second chances or they just, God doesn't give you a third chance. If he's giving you a first chance, you, you mess it up. 
is giving second chance, you are messing it up now, you may not have a third one. Unfortunately, there is a pattern to this um, craziness. Because exactly what is happening now, it is what has happened to his first marriage in England. Wow. The ex-wife reached out to me out of the blue and said that, you know, I heard your story. This is the same thing this man did to my niece in England, that my niece had to be putting a knife under her pillow to sleep, so that whenever he comes, he, he, she brings out the knife to, to wake him away. The same thing he did, I just received some gory videos of him that he did himself. Having sexual relations with patients in the hospital in England, and he himself doing it himself. Videoing it himself without those people's consent. Patients with official bands in their hands. I, 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 I am, I am as. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me ask you this question because, because as I said, um, these are difficult times, and as Busy alluded to, a lot of men, women won't do this. What you're doing, which is coming out, and because this means that your marriage is possibly over. obviously over. Um, but the question is, why are you abroad? Because there, is, there, there are questions of why is she over there? Why is she not coming? She wants to fight this. Why is she not fighting this here? Why are you not, why are you not in Nigeria? Well, my sister, I've, I've, this, this matter from the beginning, from the day I, I, I heard, I, I learned about what he's been doing, I never kept quiet. I went to Antony police station myself at like 1 a.m. To, to document the incident. Nobody prompted me. I went there myself to Antony police station. And that was the first part of call. That was where he confessed to the DPO himself. I'm not abroad because I'm running away. I, I came to Harvard for a course. I'm running a course in public policy at Harvard University, Harvard Kennedy School. So that's why I'm here. I'm, right. I'm, I'm done in a few in a few days. I will be back. Okay. And this is not. This is my second morning. My first morning was sometime in April. Okay. So I've been coming to the U.S. for my first time. Right. All right. Now. So I'm not. It's not like I'm, I'm. I've done everything I need to do. Okay. I believe that the law should take its course. Okay. I have documented it. Okay. I have. I've spoken out. Several tests have been done to, with, to my niece. Right. She's going through therapy. My children are going mm. through therapy. Okay. Would it affect you, my sister, that my daughter saw the dad once on dressing her uh, closet? On dressing her Undressing the daughter so saw the child that is going through therapy. Let me get a few more questions for you. Yes, yeah, so you've um, sort of answered what I wanted to ask. Everybody in the house, including your children, should go to therapy because, um, are, yes, a witness, a witness is almost as good as the, pers the victim um, is going to be messing up their minds. I wanted to ask you, how, how ready are you and how far are you willing to take this matter? Because one of the reasons people don't come out to support this sort of matter is after a while, you start hearing appeal from family members. Okay, now it's okay. Let's settle out of court. Let's settle out of police. You see your husband and all that. How willing are you to go very far with this case to see that justice is done for the little girl? My sister, you don't want to be in my shoes at this time. This is the most traumatizing the most difficult, the most agonizing times of my life. And, and my family as, 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 as a whole. I, like I said to you, we had done two police stations, and Tony police station, the state command. He had been arrested and detained twice. And I never had a better resolve to see this through than I have now. Right. Because even some of you have two, two grown children in England. Two grown children, 27 and 21. Wow. As I speak to you, those children, have, they don't even bear in front them anymore. Because the same thing he's doing to us now is done to those children. And they don't want to have anything to do with it. All right. Let me, let me, let me, I'll come to you, YK, because one of the most difficult parts of my job 
as a moderator on this show that the most hardest thing to do is to put myself in the shoes of the other person at all times to be able to have and then see various angles of this story. So if I were your husband at this time, I, I would say these are mere allegations that, I, that there's nothing wrong in a man having a past. My past is behind me. I married this person and um, um, she's mistaken and I, there, there's no evidence, there's no clear evidence. Yes, I was confessed maybe on that due, I, I confessed on that due, but is, it, is there something this man can use to hold against these allegations? Because I'm trying to see how, um, where his perspective is, because he's a very popular person, yeah. very known, and um, this case hasn't even gone to court, has been months. So um, what do you think is, is causing this delay? Is there something that he has that, you, that he could use it against you that is causing the police to hold on and not taking this to court? My sister, um, I, like everybody, we all have our past. I, I don't have any skeleton in my cupboard. And um, it, it beats me like every other Nigerian that with this enormous evidence is still not being charged to God. Like I said, the, we have done everything we need to do. He knows I'm not lying. The child is available for any ex uh, interview or interrogations. We've gone through all of those. Right. And um, I don't know why, you know, it seems uh, larger, larger than life. I, I married him, so I know who he is. And um, I'm not going to be bringing innocent people into all this because I know it's not all that there is that is claiming to be. So I believe, I, I want to believe that um, Lagos State has zero tolerance for such. Right. Let me get one and more question for you. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. The Mikey. truth and justice will prevail. Okay, let me get a few more questions for you. Go ahead, Wagi. Now, now that you're abroad studying, doing your course, where are your children now? My children, my children are abroad with me. They are they're presently enrolled for online classes. And your niece? My niece is, is safe. She's with family. Right. right. She just finished her work. She's awaiting. She's presently right. um, learning some um, graphics work. She's, she's waiting to take her exam. Right. right. Yeah. Let me ask, uh, what's the official situation of your marriage at the moment? Are you separated? Are you divorced? The marriage, um, Stanley was, was arrested from the house on the 30th of November 2021. Okay. And we have not been together since they have come back to the house since because there was a restraining order and there was um, an undertaking it took that it is a risk to the children and to, to my niece uh, because I'm the legal uh, guardian of my niece. So it's not been, it's not been, we've not been together since 2021 November. Um, but I, I, I heard that recently he's, he's gone back to the house. But I'm, I'm abroad. I can't <coughs> possibly be, be, be um, taking care of two, 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 two locations. Let me ask you a question that, bo that um, boggles my mind. If, yeah. if his ex-wife had so much information of what he did, yeah. why didn't she charge the case to court? Why is there... Because I don't, I don't think there's any criminal proceedings against him in the UK. Because if there were, maybe it would have been easier for you to find out. Maybe you don't have married him. But obviously, she didn't, she didn't pursue the case in the UK, I'm assuming. Okay, this is... That, I mean, I, I was not there at that time. You know, like I said, she reached out to me. Right. Uh, the, 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 the information I got was that the patient he did it to in the UK at that time, which I, I saw the video, they were 18. And um, the, the woman said, said that he paid the, the patient off 10,000 pounds each to, alert, to, to, to testify that the, the sex was consensual. So that was the reason why he was not, you know, prosecuted. Well, you know, because I think 18 is the age of consent. However, the, the hospital, according to, 
what I was told. I, I wasn't there, so I don't know. So what I was told was that the hospital had a, a, a camera as well that saw some of the things that he did. Right. And uh, asked for his dismissal or his resignation. I don't know. Right. Because um, the, the story I was being told by family when we were about to get married was totally different from some of the things that I heard. Right, right here. Yeah. Because in, I know that in England, if there is um, child abuse, there is no bribe. There is no police. You, you will go to court. Oh, we lost that oh, one. She was in there consenting her door. So since they are doors, they had, she had, they had to, according to the mm, story, yeah. mm, but it could be they, paid off. She said a story about the hospital. That kind of story that happened in the hospital, they, they would have arrested him. Immediately. Like, they would like, take like criminal offenses. And I had wanted to ask, because I've heard where he has said that it's a vendetta because he moved back to the house. So I wanted to ask her that yeah. if there's any truth so to that, that. I also wanted to ask um, the position of um, Femi's family on this matter. Mm. What are they saying? Are they supportive? or are you, have, have, have they just cast her aside that you want to expose mm. our son? Mm. You know, just get a perspective. Mm. Well, somebody sent a message here, um, Evelyn K on Instagram. It says, Mrs. Remy Olaleye is a champion. She has done the sacrifice to all the women of this world. I commend her courage and God will see her through. Mm. So I guess that's part of the learnings because when we, I mean, it's easy to say these women have started again, mm. you know, men bashing. But you see, the truth is that a lot of women hold their marriage in such sacred position. Yes. That things like this happen, you just so hush, even hush. their own daughter, yeah. they won't say anything because so they want to When we see protect. a woman who is able to come out in the, in the midst of this kind of thing, we must celebrate and acknowledge the work she's done. Mm. However, we must ensure that justice is served, that that child, the most important person in this entire conversation, mm. gets proper healing. And in that, that her perpetrator, if indeed he is a perpetrator, mm. is, is, is arrested, and this matter is taken to court, he's prosecuted as Baba Jesha is in, in prison, he ought also to be in prison if indeed these um, allegations are, are, are true. But it would be heartbreaking yeah. if, um, if this story is not taken to a logical conclusion. Because what we are seeing right now, we're waiting for the police to push it forward. Mm -hmm. And nothing has happened it so far. It seems like he's just mm -hmm. bawling. And he's... I'm told she's back. Why can't any... Remy, are you there? Yes, I am. Why can't and BC had a question? Let me start with YK's question. Go ahead. Yeah, um, he, they've had stories of him saying that it's a vendetta that you are um, pushing against him because he moved back to the house. And I wanted to ask how true that is and why is he saying that? I mean, why is he saying that? <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. It's, uh, it's ridiculous how uh, there will be a vendetta against you because you move back to the house. I don't, I don't understand. It's, 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 it's childish, it's ridiculous. Number one, you haven't lived in that house for 10 months. You broke protocols, brought police, unmarked police, and um, um, breached estate security and jumped the fence, destroyed burglary, destroyed doors to gain access into the house. When I was called by the estate security that, oh, madam, uh, somebody come and say the house, I broke into the house. I said, that's okay, leave him. I have a CCTV. I can, I can watch the CCTV of the house remotely. So I saw everything that happened. And it doesn't bother me because I can possibly be in two places at the same time. And it cannot take away the fact that this is what you did. Right. Why were you arrested from the house in November, on November 30th, 30, um, 2021? Why, if you, if you are upright, why do you have to bring on mass police and talk? Right. Let me get a few more questions in for you, Remy. Yeah. There's some important questions I need you yeah. to yeah. ask. Yes. So, you go. Um, go so first of all, I want to ask um, how the, his family members are reacting to this um, story. How are they taking it? Oh, are they supportive? Oh are they not goodness. supportive? That's oh my goodness! This is, that is a story for another day. Wow. And um, that that's really 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 unbelievable. Okay. Then how is the very, girl? I mean, I, Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Go, Go ahead. ahead. Um, you know, unfortunately, it's so 
unfortunate because I thought I had an excellent relationship with the mother. Mm. Anybody that knows me you know how much I take care of Femi's mother. In fact, she has a name for me. She calls me a new baby. This is a child that I should have birthed. Mm. But unfortunately, my niece confessed right in the presence of Femi's mother. Mm. But she turns around to say, well, her, she, when, when my niece was confessing, Femi's own mother was like, oh, Femi Pani. But she turns around to tell me, what, what, what has it done that they have not done before? Every single member of the family are against me. Mm. They know their son. They know their brother. They know what he has done. They are the ones gaslighting me and, and sending threat messages. Mm. In, in, in gaslighting, manipulating. Mm. But they're, they're, His mother they're... was even... Sending me garlic, but no. Wow. But there are allegations, Remy, that you also maltreat this young girl in question. I mean, there are there are stories around saying that you, you don't even love. I mean, I mean, I was have heard this that you maltreat the girl and that um, you lied that you're in Nigeria. There's so many stories out there. How do you respond my to those sister, who are saying that you my you, sister, you manipulate the girl? My sister, my the child is alive. Mm. So to testify to all this. I am solely responsible for this child. I have pictures. And I pay, Femi has never contributed a dime to this child's education. I am fully responsible for her. She is happy being with me. Her, mo her mother is alive to testify. This child is alive to testify. I had never touched her before. The first time I did was when, in November, and she even, when she was at the police station, because some of the allegations, <coughs> he is sharing around that, oh, I did her. And the child told them on video, I wasn't even there at the police station, that my auntie has never touched me. I was rude to her, and I aggravated her, and because I was frustrated. That's why I was, I was rude. I was like... Uh, mommy, can't you see what I'm, 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 exp I'm going through? So, I mean, you know, when someone is down, it, they can say anything, but the truth remains constant. So, let, let me ask... I have videos. Yeah, let me ask uh, yeah, this question. Videos? How... You have videos of... I have videos of, you know, holidays with my children, that's my niece inclusive, that we've taken... I have videos of her when the times were good. I have videos of her now that she's, she's traumatized. And the child is available for anybody to, to reach out to, to okay. ask questions. Okay, ma, how is this child doing now? What's your assessment on her mental state? I know that you've said she's going through therapy, but is she a bit more open up to you now? Is she giving you stories did she tell you the reason she didn't report when this started? How is she doing yes. overall now? She, um, uh, her mental state of health is a bit more balanced now. Um, thanks to uh, the wonderful psychologists that have been working with us. Um, she's more open now. She's more, she's more uh, brave. Um, and above all, she's consistent. Because I, I said to her, I said, my dear, because even me, I was shocked. I said, my dear, did, you know, did this man offend you? Did I offend you? I don't want you to, to lie against him. All right, Remy, let me, let me pause yeah. here. Let me pause here because the truth yeah. is that these kind of stories, it's always important to get both sides. I mean, I said that's the hardest part of my job is that I must always find that other angle. I've tried to reach out, my producer has tried to reach out to Dr. Laleya himself. Um, he's not willing to talk to us at this time. But um, as I said, the, the various mm -hmm. angles are that, you're, you, that uh, people are saying that you, were, you maltreated the girl, that um, yes, there are other, there's many other factors which we'll consider, but I it's important. The, I have the children, the girls' school. Sorry yeah. to call you, Morayo. Yes, ma'am. My, my nieces, teachers, they can, they can testify. It goes up until recently, they, they knew that I wasn't even a biological mother. Up until recently. And the teachers are saying that, ma, we are ready to speak out. 
I take care of her. If anybody that knows... I'm getting knows a message me, knows, knows I'm talking to you. I mean, I'm getting a message from various people telling me that this girl was coached on what to say. Okay. I'm getting that she was coached. You know, that um, that you, they're they're saying that, that Remy is a liar. I'm just getting so many messages from different sources on That's my phone right okay. now. So I'm talking Why to you. You yeah. know, like I said to you, this, this, there's only one conscious thing in life. Yeah. And it is the truth. Yeah. Thankfully, the Lagos State Government, as a forensic um, interview department, that can interview this child without me being there. The truth is constant. It may take a while, Mariah. Yeah. yeah. I don't have anything to gain. It is the, like I said, it's the most difficult thing for me right. to do. Right. I wish anybody that says she was coached should put herself in my shoes. Right. Okay, let me let you wrap so up. I, I don't I want... coached, I... Did I coach the people in England? Mm. Because there's a pattern to this thing. Did I coach his children in England? Did I coach his ex wife please? Did I coach the, the, the patient that has already testified against him in Nigeria that he did the same to them? Did I coach his former, okay. his former staff? I have two of his former staff that have reached out to me. Hmm. Did I coach them as well? Did I coach his former staff that he was sleeping with? Let me read the message. Out to me? Let me read the message from Adeto. I know she said she knows you very well. Um, she said that you that you, you you shared a few lies and that um, you went to meet the governor in Yankee that you want the house. Um, that you she said I mean there's a lot of things that she said that okay I mean what's what's the relation with Adeto and why how is she involved in this case? I don't know what, I don't know what you're talking about. I I am I don't I am not I I don't talk on. Uh, yeah, and say, say. Yeah. Well, let me let you go. I mean, I don't want to, I don't I don't want to dig further because I think um, this is an emotional emotional thing for it, you. It, it is an emotional thing, and yeah. it, 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 what beats me is that we're talking about human life here. Exactly. And then we're talking about a house, brick and mortar. Yeah. We're talking about the life of your children. Does that even bother him? We're talking about the life of a child. Who calls you daddy? Mm. Well, yeah, you're talking about the house. I don't care about the house. I'm not hungry. Yeah. And he knows that. When I met Femi, he was living in a one room at Mapoluku. So that should tell you how far we, well, we have come. So I'm not, I, it's not a house, he can have it. I'm not mm. bothered about the house. We are talking about human life. Emotions, lives have been damaged. My daughter has seen you undress her sister. Hmm. So we're talking about life. You are not even bothered about my own mental state of health. Yeah. You sleep with me, your wife. You go downstairs and sleep with my niece. You, 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 you. This man knows the uh, menstrual period of this child. If you don't have anything to do with her, what, what is your concern with her menstrual period? Let me let you go, Remy. Yeah, Remy. Oh. We have to wrap up. The show has ended, but thank you so much for well, sharing. Thank you so much sharing. Thank you yes, so thank much. you very much thank for you. sharing your story. And we're still going to reach out with, to your husband to see if we can get his own side of the story too, because this case is such a, an interesting story because we can learn so much from it. And we, we, we celebrate your strength yeah, and your ability to come out. on the show to thank speak you. your heart. Thank you very much. It was thank a pleasure you. having you on the show. Thank, thank you. Thank um, you. Thank you, ladies. Just so our viewers are aware, uh, we have tried to reach, uh, we have tried to chat with Dr. Femi Olaleye uh, this morning, and um, he said he will speak to us at some point, but not now. He's not um, ready for a conversation, um, because this, as I said, are allegations. As much as, as a woman, we like to understand where our, 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 car, our other woman, our, you know, our female self are coming from. I definitely understand and empathize mm. with this story. But it's always important to hear all the sides. And let us hear that part and know exactly what transpired. But at the end of the day, no matter which side we are on, a child is involved. Yeah. Something happened to that child. And I think it was Dami, uh, the, the princess, was saying that there is a medical report that this girl was molested. They have something from Maribel Center, evidence that this girl was molested. So if that happened, all the other factors...
are really secondary. Something happened to that girl, and that must be properly investigated, and the perpetrator, whoever it is, must be brought to book. I think that's most important in all this. That's all we can take on this um, show. Um, see you tomorrow. Bye for now.